Welcome to Concerning the Spiritual in Art, a podcast exploring spirituality, consciousness, and the creative process. I'm your host, Martin Benson. All right, y'all, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I have a very special episode for you with artist Dan Perkins. Um, Dan and I begin our discussion today uh, talking about his latest body of work and sort of this transition, how he's kind of shifted from more formal concerns in painting, concerns around perception, and how this latest body of work is kind of kind of moving into a newer space where he has more concerns around the mental space and psychological space and how we're like kind of moving and transitioning from one place into another. And they have this real mysterious, magical quality to them. And they're very inviting and meditative to look at. And so we talk sort of about meditation and sort of how that draws us into the work, not only as artists or as viewers, but also we talked about meditative practice as well and breathing and, and how like this time that we live in is really rife with a lot of tension and, un, and, and a sense of the unknown and um, how that can bring anxiety up and how that can bring a lot of questions about sort of existential reality and how art can be a tool for us to kind of not only contemplate these questions, but also to move through them and sort of see a sense of uh, spaciousness and possibility and a sense of wonder uh, for the world that we're in to kind of get us out of our sort of patterns of thinking and frameworks um, that we're used to and into new ways of thinking and feeling and experiencing. And um, he touched upon how even the past few years with the pandemic and sort of the heightened political tension in the environment had kind of caused him to kind of look more inward. And so we had a real discussion around that process of, of looking inside and and what that means in this world and how we need to be more open to these kinds of discussions around mental health and mental space and um, how art can be a great facilitator for that. And uh, yeah, it was just a really rich and deep conversation. Um, I really connected deeply with Dan and a lot of the thinking that goes into his work. And I think we had a lot to share with each other and I think you're gonna really appreciate it. So um, here y'all go, Dan Perkins. All right, Dan, welcome to the podcast. How's it going today? Great, great. And uh, thanks so much for having me, Martin. It's uh, lovely to, you know, wake up on a Sunday morning and talk talk with you about uh, new work and like-minded things. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, it's all about us connecting, right? Um, and just being able to have a shared dialogue around the things that we seemingly are both very deeply invested in and interested in. And um, like I was telling you kind of off camera, I've, uh, ever since I came across your work, I've just been so blown away and inspired by the imagery that you do, the way you use paint, the delicacy of what seems to be on the surface, the way you like handle the material. Obviously, I haven't seen them in person, but like, you know, when you work with this medium, you can kind of tell with good images sort of what's going on there. And it's just it's magnificent stuff like and this latest body of work um, from your show Passages I've noticed that there has been kind of an interesting evolution or transition in some of the imagery that you've been using in your past body of work. You've kind of stripped it down a little bit, but they feel some of the past work feels more about like formal concerns and concerns of perception themselves. And these ones, for me personally, they feel like these windows into these other worlds. They feel mis more mysterious. They feel psychological. They feel very kind of... Um, mystical in some ways at least even just the way the luminous quality of light in them and uh and sort of the simplicity of the images so i was curious maybe starting our dialogue kind of uh where you can maybe speak about this transition into this latest body of work and some of the thoughts that you've have been bringing to it totally yeah um i think it's a great way to frame out what i've been working on uh recently and i view it all as kind of a progression and all as an evolution um, but I definitely can see looking back through the kind of years, like you're saying, this kind of these these subtle jumps that occur. Um, and I think you're right to highlight the kind of shift from concerns that were almost solely grounded in kind of formal ideas about painting, shape, color, form mm -hmm. um, and playing within a system. I feel like. Uh, two or three years ago, I was really concerned with that idea of like playing within a system and kind of uh, looping geometries back on themselves and distorting them. 
And I think engaging in that formal play gave me the tools uh, that I've been using and am using to kind of express a more personal vision like you're highlighting. Um, and I definitely think in the last two to three years, the work has shifted a little bit towards the more psychological, um, towards thinking about, you know, my relationship to the world, like where we are in history, like in a very general sense, just in, you know, an experiential sense. Um, mm -hmm. And especially all of the like heavy, very heavy things that have happened over the right. course of the last couple of years in the world, at least in the States and, and worldwide, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I think having all of that in my head and kind of working through it and processing it uh, kind of, yeah, culminated in this new body of work was really like the the idea or the the name passage for its multiple connotations so yeah uh simple suggestion of like an architectural space like a, a threshold or a door or a window uh is like a literal bodily kind of form of passage you know we yeah. cross through one room into another we look out of one space into another mm -hmm. uh, but i also really like its metaphoric potential for uh right exchanging maybe states of mind or opening yourself onto other ways of understanding or looking outside your particular point of view uh and for me personally i feel like the experience of time can be a way of passing through those different mm. states of mind or coming back to something with a totally different understanding so I liked that it was had specificity, but it's really open ended too, and it yeah. requires somebody to kind of bring something into it. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense to me, and I think the context around this sort of shift in work, just you know, the pandemic, the sort of state of the world, like I think when we're dealing with more existential realities, it forces you know, I think people go in like one of two directions. They either just go balls to the wall crazy in terms of just consumption and wild behavior and sort of like letting off all of the sort of hinges of any sort of, um, I don't know, um, kind of holding back of a behavior. And then others might go inward. They kind of like have to really dive into themselves and sort of contemplate their relationship to the world in a new way and have to sort of really think about how we're going to move through these times so you say the word passages it's like yeah it does have so many dimensions to it like we could think of it like a bodily passage like you stated like moving from one space into another but we can also think about it in a mental space like moving from one mental space into another or even this idea of of journeying of transitioning in time and i and i don't know what i don't know how you feel but when i look at sort of the volatility of this sort of time period that we're in it feels like we are in this liminal space between one phase and another. And I think the mystery around what that next phase is going to be can heighten a lot of anxiety and angst and also a sense of uncertainty. Um, but yeah, within, totally. but, but within that, I think there's possibility for something spectacular to happen. And so I, I look at your work as kind of, it is sort of like almost an illustration of this in-between space, in between one room and another, or seeing where we're moving to, but not really understanding what that space is. You know what I mean? Because there is, I love the way that like you have these points of light that are illuminating, that are framed by these very distinct forms. But if you're not really sure what that space is, it doesn't really, for me, they feel very like inviting and intriguing. They feel very like loving and sort of approachable, but still like not really describing what it is. And so I, I do see that metaphor in some ways of like the time we're in and the sort of the things that we're grappling with as society kind of playing out in those paintings in a new way, just hearing you talk about it. Um, yeah. I, I I really like that concept you brought up with this idea of the liminal where it's like you're crossing towards something you're in that in-between space right but the the kind of the allure and maybe also the um mild fear of the unknown uh and for me that's a really rich idea and I feel like it I've feel like personally that's the kind of psychological space that I think I've been in uh at, at times mm -hmm. uh and i feel like playing with that personally i feel like i've also had 
you know, other people kind of relate to it in strong ways as well. Um, so I, yeah, I just think that's like a really like, I don't know, it's a really nice distillation of some of the, some of the like big stuff I've been thinking about, but like you're yeah. saying, you have these inviting forms that have a certain luminosity or luminousness to them. Um, but I like that they have a kind of, they're specific in a way, but they also are broad, you know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I like when people kind of bring their own specificity to them or kind of flesh them out their own understanding of the world. Um, I like having that openness to the work. Yeah, it's definitely so, so much there because of some of the simplicity of how you've really took, taken away a lot of detail. And the detail is really in the use of the of the way that you're blending that paint, like the the fine way in which you're transitioning color so that you can create that subtle luminosity. Like I think it's red passage or red, I forget which one, but with the red circle kind of um, illuminated, you know what I mean? It's like this yeah. almost like circle that's illuminated inside and outside of it. Um, to me, it's like, it just draws me in because of the delicacy of how the light is. It has such an, a like visceral glow to it. I wonder, like I, when I see it on the screen, I'm like, it almost feels like there's a light emanating from it. Yeah. So just like your handling of the paint and I, your attention to the detail of the surface. I mean, to me, it, it, it must be a very meditative process to be able to slow down, to be really thoughtful about how you're applying uh, the paint to the surface like that. But I also look at your work, the actual finished product as being kind of these meditations, like you're speaking of, like you're creating just enough information to get people to start entering into the work. But then there's this sort of field of open possibility that the that the viewer has to bring into it. And I think anytime I feel and experience work like that, there's a sense of connectivity between myself and the artist, but a sense of like the artist almost holding this space for me to like maybe be a little more vulnerable in my own interior experience to like really go within myself. So I, I definitely look at the work as these kind of like almost visual meditations for people. Like I could imagine looking into one for a long time and kind of having almost like a communion with it to the point where it might conjure some kind of release or emotion or insight from within me. Have, have people kind of ever spoken to you about that quality in your work of them being like, very meditate almost like a meditative object for them to um, use i mean to me that's uh thank you that's like a really beautiful idea to me um and i feel like personally my like richest experience with uh, with art objects that um are my like kind of yeah those kind of like me like deep like uh memorable experiences uh are similar to the one you're describing so if mm -hmm. i can offer even just like a glimpse of that then i feel like i'm really where i want to be and i'm hitting something that i think is important and yeah like really offers possibility yeah um, and just like you're saying i feel like my specific material interest and kind of like um Right. There's that hinge between control and chance whenever you're using something like paint. Um, to me, that can be like a really uh, meditative place to work from. Uh, usually if things are going well. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> yeah. So there's always that. Um, but oh, yeah. I like that dance, that balance. And I feel like if on whole I can make like an object that does offer a sliver of that or a glimpse of that to someone where they can have their own kind of personal experience and yeah if they're generous enough or if they're open enough to have that more expansive uh, experience like you're talking about to me that's like yeah it's humbling it's like really incredible yeah, um, yeah. so that's like yeah I mean that's what I'm after I'm hope I'm hope that it comes through <laughs> For sure. And I, you know, I can, I can definitely tell you that it does because if it's doing it for me through a computer screen, I can't imagine what it's doing for people in, in 3d, you know what I mean? When you're actually in the space of these objects and the intimacy of them is really wonderful as well, because I think they're mostly smaller in scale. Mm -hmm. And so they're drawing you into them in a physical way because of their intimacy um in scale was that a deliberate choice for you to like kind of shift the scale of your work so that it just has a different kind of connectivity with people sometimes yeah. when you deal with like these immense 
pieces. They can be overwhelming in an incredible way, but they can also create a sense of like distance from the work. Totally. Um, um, yeah, I I feel like um, I've always really loved small paintings in particular. Um, so I do make like some very small, like five by seven inch paintings. And to wow. me, there's something about that kind of like almost, yeah, like just such an intimate little object. Um, to me, that's like really a rich territory. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I also like, I have kind of like a, a pretty tight range, but nothing uh, huge. Um, so, yeah, I feel like there's something about that kind of more bodily space uh, where you feel like the object is like no bigger than your 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 person that I feel like to me makes the most sense for how I'm thinking about the work. I feel mm -hmm. like when you get to that kind of, you know, like eight to 10 foot painting, it just is, it's, a, I feel like people can make really great, huge paintings. It's just something I'm not super interested in. Yeah. Yeah. It just, I, yeah, it kind of depends on sort of the artist themselves, the way that they work and so forth. And um, I also think of like these large monumental pieces, like they're super exceptional to experience in like museum spaces or in like lobbies of huge buildings and stuff. But the average person doesn't have like these huge walls for them to live on. So there's really even just like a practical sort of, um, I guess for me, like a, a practical distancing from super large scale work as well, because I I, don't, I can't store the damn things, you know, yeah, let, yeah, let I mean, alone the amount of paint I have to use, especially the way you use oil. I'd imagine, you know, like your process would be a little bit more painstaking on such a large scale. Yeah, totally. Um, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All these concerns. I mean, like yeah. the physical world always reasserts itself. Um, <laughs> okay. So yeah, those are definitely, that's definitely just a truth, but um yeah, like I was saying, I think there's something about that small gem that really works. But yeah. I do like looking at like, you know, slightly larger scales or been thinking a lot about like um the size of a mirror or like the mm -hmm. size of a window. Like so yeah. it's trying to use those kind of um architectural cues for mm -hmm. maybe thinking about scale too. And yeah. just because like they relate to the body, I think, in an interesting way. So yeah, definitely. It was a really interesting question. I feel like it's one that you can always revisit and always come back to. Exactly. You can always kind of play with it and things like that. Even um, because I what well, you're talking about, like kind of relating like certain things we're used to, like the size of doorways, the size, typical size of windows and how they relate to like our bodies. Because in that sense, like maybe at that scale in a particular exhibition or a particular installation or idea you have, like you can you can create maybe a different layer of an experience for someone actually feels like they could physically walk into the paintings themselves, which definitely could change them. But I do like the intimacy of them because they are kind of speaking to this more like they are relating to the body in some ways, but really relating to the body mind and like the psychological component that's woven into the body. And so when you're, when you're even just like, when I, I look at work that small, like you're kind of, your head's pushed forward from your shoulders, you know, you're holding this certain kind of posture sometimes of investigation, which I think helps you enter the work too, in a bodily way, but they oh, feel, they yeah. feel more mental and more like this mental space. Um, and I think that's something in these times that we're sort of emerging into is that we need to become more and more like um, collaborative with is our interior lives. I think a lot of the culture that we're in is really hyper-focused on the external sort of uh, expressions of, of life, like material realities and sort of material concerns. But like the interiority is just as important to acknowledge and connect with as like our external environment. And so in these times of great sort of change that's happening, more and more people, I think, are looking within themselves for bigger answers to bigger questions they might not have asked before. I also see that in relationship to like the shift in culture and uh, with psychedelics and people wanting to explore their interior landscapes um, in these ways as well. And so I, I do see like a cultural shift where people are more open and interested in that process of like meditative inquiry or developing insight through self-reflection. Is this something that you personally got like outside of your painting practice? Because I know obviously when you're painting, you get into these incredible states at times where you are totally in connection with 
the interior and exterior is like a one thing happening. But like uh, outside of that, are you interested in some of those practices or or explorations like in your personal life, whether it's like meditative practice or even like exploring your consciousness through um, various forms of, of various psychedelic compounds or breath work or again, like meditation? Is that something you're interested in? Um, yeah, I feel like that stuff has kind of come into my space a little bit more, uh, in the last few years, um, it's like simple things like, yeah, like breathing meditations for sure. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's been like a great tool to deal with anxiety, but it also like opens up all these other ways of understanding the world as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something I come back to on a regular basis. Um, uh, and so I feel like that also is like a key or a cue to kind of help situate the work as well. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I feel like there is, yeah, there's a, like an interesting space there mentally for people to ask questions, especially when maybe like you're saying the kind of answers that we're getting from popular culture are pretty, or leave, I feel like leave a lot of people wanting. Yes. They're pretty limited. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So you kind of like, you know, you have to kind of generate your own set of tools. And so you can look in many directions, you know, you can look all over the place. Um, and I feel like we're, it does seem like there are other kind of subcultures that are becoming interested in specific ways or maybe rehashing solutions that were previously written off. Uh, and that has generated, I think, some, yeah, novel understanding. It's restarted a, a conversation that I think can be rich and can be interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see some of that stuff um, kind of becoming just less taboo, you know? Yeah, exactly. I feel like just more understanding of things and more, yeah, just being more open or like, you know, even if something isn't a perfect fit for you, at least not just writing it off. First exactly, hand. exactly. There's so many different ways in which we can enter these spaces of, uh, I'm going to use the word intimacy again, but like deep intimacy with our own self, like the sort of sense of like, I am, or the sense of, uh, of like what it's like to be you, which is how a lot of like neuroscientists describe like what consciousness is. It's like, it's what it's like to be you in a way. And it's filled with so many different inputs that we get through our senses. But even when you sort of close down some of those inputs, and you just turn your awareness in on itself, you start to realize there is such a rich, deep, vast landscape within your own mind body to explore and discover. I think the way that our minds like repress information or hold on to certain things, like especially traumatic experiences or experiences we're just not ready to process, how they just get kind of stored inside of us like uh, eventually it becomes kind of harmful. It's like we have to go in and we have to kind of release these things. We have to empty them out. And I look at like meditative process and, and processes of self-inquiry or using breath to kind of connect with the mind body as like a way of almost clearing out a lot of the things we're holding on to. It's like creating spaciousness within ourselves. And I think it's from that sense of spaciousness that we can have a greater sense of possibility of what we might be able to bring into our lives. And, um, and I think art is a tool for helping people do that as well, for giving people a new lens into reality, a new sense of like perspective on how we might be able to relate to our own experience of life itself, because no one has any answers for anybody at the end of the day. And that's a hard place to be in, but it's also a very beautiful place to be in. If you can like kind of embrace the fact of not knowing and being in a space of wonder and curiosity, I think that's something we might be missing culturally is just a sense of non-judgmental curiosity toward people we don't quite understand because yeah. we're seeing such an opposite of that right now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with what you just said. I think like this idea of wonder and like allowing, yeah, allowing a non-judgmental space of like play and exploration. I feel like those ideas are so beaten out of contemporary culture. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like they, like even just hearing you say them again, they sound novel. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's because I never think about it because it's like <laughs> almost never brought up or it's like, yeah, it's just like hugely suppressed. Um, yeah. So I feel like art and so many things can be a tool to open 
that mind back up. And if you can get, you know, your, I feel like if you can get people's really, I feel like people's minds are generally very conditioned into patterns, you know, and schedules and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And so if you can get <laughs> out of that just a little bit, yes. it's like, oh man, it's such like a, yeah, it's like a great, like, that's really what I hope for. Uh, and seeing seeing that that that's like a common thing that other people are reaching towards uh and pointing at like forming a community around that hope i feel like that can be really powerful um, yeah yeah so i think that like that word wonder i feel like i oftentimes like when i'm just like you know i keep sketchbooks in the studio and sometimes i'll jot down words and like sometimes that world will, word will pop up like uh repeatedly and i'm, just, I'm like feel like it's some, there's something there that will always hold my attention and I'm always kind of figuring out yeah so just stay and try and stay in that space and like come back to it definitely dude yeah it's something we have to like we can't be in it all day every day because life has just practical realities to it like I gotta do the dishes even though I honestly I can't find a sense of wonder with the warmth <laughs> of this of the water on my hands like do mindfulness like real presence of like yeah. what's actually happening and really yeah, feeling think, like what the soap is doing and like, yeah everything you can, can have it it's just yes. like getting the mind to kind of wake up to it exactly uh and it is hard because we're so ever I feel like just people in general they're, they're so busy everyone's so like there's so many things to or we're so conditioned to worry about stuff. And I think yeah. the mind is kind of trained to do that for a variety of reasons that I yeah. don't really understand. For uh, sure. Yeah, there's but, like evolutionary imperatives for why we have to like think about the future, why we have to remember the past so that we cannot make the same mistakes, or why we have to make certain assumptions like in terms of like uh fear processing because like fear is a is a tool within the mind to help us survive but like what we've forgotten how to do is turn that off and i think a lot of our what our culture is sort of like creating is like a heightened sense of of like fear states even like subtle subtly so everyone's kind of kind of like in flight or fight or flight a lot of times um, their adrenaline is spiked all the time because of media, because of yeah, the news cycle just mm -hmm. always keeping on your toes and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. I feel like we are with our mediated understanding of the world just so conditioned, uh, right, to like perpetually exist in that. Um, and I feel like, yeah, finding little windows or ways out of that or little avenues to kind of reopen the door into a, a broader way of like understanding and taking in the world and relating to people yeah i feel like we just need more of that <laughs> definitely dude and i think what you're doing as an artist is providing that like you're providing that space yeah you are you are i mean i'll tell you i'll affirm you right now you 100 percent are like because because you're creating a sense of wonder and mysteriousness around these images that you're that you're sharing with the world because it is drawing people into that space of wonder or awe or magic or just like unknowingly unknowing space but in like a safe and protective kind of way because it's it's the painting you know and i think that sense of wonder is so crucial i think children when you look at children they just naturally have it they're always so curious about every little thing. I think people who go on like deep psychedelic journeys are always like coming out of them a lot of times, like with this refreshed sense of wonder, because they realize there's so much we don't know about our existence. And so the yeah. existence, I'm like looking at this plant next to me right now, like the existence of this beautiful plant, like there's so much to wonder and so much mysteriousness and magic encoded in my experience of looking at that plant. But a lot of times, you know, we're so numb to it because we, oh, it's just a stupid plant. Like I've seen that my whole life. And what we have to do is kind of almost strip away our conditioning. Like you were speaking, yeah. like the patterns uh, that we get locked in, we get locked in these sort of holding patterns of the mind. Um, and so that creates a sense of like that the world is kind of mundane and banal and lacking energy and wonder and excitement. And so we have to have ways in which to pull ourselves out of this sort of trap of the mind. Yeah. And, and I think art is an incredible tool for us to do that. And I see so many artists, you mentioned the word community. Like I see so many artists 
I mean, we artists have been doing this forever, but like, I feel like lately in the past decade or so, I've seen so many artists exploring these kinds of spaces in their work, creating this sense of awe, mysteriousness, uh, this feeling of, of spirituality, even without any sort of dogmatic um, sort of um, fetters attached to it. I just, I'm feeling it in a lot of artists. And so again, that's why I'm doing this thing. It's like, I want to, I, I want to connect and build this sense of that community and that there is this sort of shared interest in getting us outside of the material uh, spaces and into sort of these uh, more, I don't know, like less tangible, less um, concrete spaces of the mind. So we yeah. can begin to have a discussion around that experience. Totally. I feel like what you were just saying about like, um, like uh, having like a different kind of s different sensory perception kind of experiences that alter your way of looking, like whether that's through meditation or, you know, any kind of avenue that you find to open that up. But realizing that we, our mind does condition our way of seeing and those two processes work together in really complex ways. Mm -hmm. And that when, you can kind of find a new way into that sensory apparatus that is so rich and like so like the world is so yeah there's just like so much going on so if you can find a new way of looking i feel like that can really open people up um uh and I, yeah i just i I feel like we'd ever, everyone needs more of it i know right <laughs> I, I know keep, i keep coming back to that but it, it does yeah. seem like there's i, I wish there was I just, I just wish it was kind of more part of the conversation. And I think it's great that, you know, you're doing this and other people are kind of like, like you're saying, there's more people kind of keying in on this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and actually I've been keep like looking, looking back at that painting of years up on the wall <laughs> and it's like, it's really pulling me in. There's something about that kind of helix motion yeah. around that luminous orb mm -hmm. where I can, you know, you start thinking about those, those uh, biological ideas you were talking about with like maybe, you know, plant and you can start to think about like scientific understanding of cells and mm -hmm. photosynthesizing, but then also like a really archaic notion of light. Yeah. Um, so I feel like a lot of it's just opening your mind up onto these things and not getting stuck in the mundane, but it's so easy to do. It's it is, so man. It's like quicksand. Yeah. It's like quicksand. And that's why I think we need each other. I think that's why community and connection is such an important, like um, a safety net for like people who can fall into those traps. Like we need our sense of like community to help us, our friendship, our neighbors, like we need to connect with each other more and, um, and realize that we're all in this shared experience of life together. And what happens to any of us happens to all of us on some fundamental level on some level we're not fully like aware of all the time but that we can tap into from time to time or experience a glimmer of or a taste of this sense of of as um cliche as the word is but oneness like that there is a shared sense of symbiosis between everything that exists and in order to like help cultivate healing and health and wellness within the entire system, each component of that system has to start to do that work on themselves too. Um, and so we all have to kind of play our part of like healing ourselves in order to help heal the collective. And there are so many tools and processes that we have to use. It's not just like one thing that's going to work. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, I can just do this one thing and it'll take care of everything. But it's like, we have to do a bunch of little things and we have to sort of discover what it is that helps us. Like you said, like, Oh, kind of break the cycle or break the pattern in the mind. Like what's going to like create a little tear in the fabric that eventually yeah. will open on its own. It's like, I think that's in a way what art can do. It's like it can poke holes in the fabric of someone's mind just enough, create a little tear and maybe nothing comes from it right away. But it's almost like over time, like that little tear will open and open and open and a whole new world will enter yeah. Um, with time so like in an idealist version in my mind I think that's what art can sometimes do sometimes it's not like um, as immediate and intense as some other sort of experiences but it's subtle it can be very subtle yeah. and but it can still play a role in the opening of the mind itself totally. 
Yeah, I love that uh, metaphor you're using, uh, like a basically of a veil for the mind, yeah. and it's like veiled veiled experiences, veiled ways of seeing. And so there's different ways of, right? Either like, you know, poking a hole through a veil, or choosing to see the through the veil in a different way, or maybe like seeing through the weave slightly differently. Like however you want to metaphorize that idea of cloth yeah. and understanding. Uh, and so I feel like yeah, like like every way of seeing is some sort of veiled experience it's like we see through the body we understand through our mind and it's they're all limited but they mm -hmm. all have uh, they all offer like potential because it's like without that way of seeing like that how else would we understand the world mm -hmm. um yeah i feel like that actually that concept of the veil has been something i've been thinking about a lot uh, yeah. recently, um in my studio and just thinking about it like you know it has obvious pictorial connotations for painting but then also like a broader right like uh you know uh broader way of just viewing and greeting the world yeah for sure because we do see through like these various media like there's certain things that mediate our experience like um you know just even like the uh the eyes mediating between the light right and then the brain's pr way of processing and like, and what's interesting to me, I think about how the brain process information, how it through conditioning and time, it's learned how to accept and sort of give you certain information, but then not give you other information. You know what I mean? Like it's ability to filter out information so that we can experience things through a certain comfortable lens. Right. Yeah, but like yeah. so much is coming in through the sense inputs, but like that we can't be aware of all of it. Um, and it's interesting, I think about this in the process of like how like, uh, a person develops from like being an infant, um, thinking about like an infant who has no concepts in their mind. There's no sort of language that they have yet. There's no ways of which they can fully understand or comprehend the sensory experiences that they're having. And I always wonder like, what is that like for like a newborn baby to see light, to hear sound, yeah, to yeah, taste, yeah because they don't have any of like the intellectual frameworks of, of language or conceptual frameworks of ideas to sort of ground their experience in any way. It's like almost like this pure open field of perception. And so I'm, I'm always like deeply curious of like what that's like. And then that process of over time, they learn that, you know, one thing is one, one way and the other thing is another way. This is hot. This is cold, right? right? That light you see is uh, coming through a window. That's yeah. an object that has, that's, that's opaque or, you know what I mean? Like yeah, that, yeah. It's, all, it's that whole process. Up. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I mean, I haven't thought about um, that kind of, developmental process of cognition for children much but it makes me want to revisit so I feel like in my mind I'm like don't infants see in black and white up until a certain age or like in the womb they don't develop and it's like yeah it's like all these questions I'm not sure about yeah. but even that just like thinking about that that generates wonder and kind of like something to consider mm -hmm. uh, yeah um, and yeah, like, or even just thinking about the way we develop rods and cones and how we see color and like mm -hmm. all that the reflective like thinking about wave, wave and particle light. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's like so much. I guess it's like you kind of have to focus. Like you're saying, it's like you, your mind is so overwhelmed or so kind of conditioned to pay attention to certain cues. So it's training yourself to kind of like reopen and reassert mm -hmm. and kind of, yeah, like focus that spotlight on something that will maybe get you excited as opposed to drive you yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. I think that's what meditative process has done for me personally is like, it's helped me strip away a lot of the barriers or boundaries mm -hmm. of like identification or judgment, or um, even like certain conceptual frameworks about what something is versus what something isn't. And being able to like slowly immerse yourself in this state of like pristine clarity of just like taking the raw data of the moment in without trying to attach to any filtration process of it. It's like just being in this pure state of conscious awareness and you get little, like the more you like get comfortable in those deep states of, of meditative practice, like you get these little glimpses every now and again, not very often and not for very long 
um, because the mind is so strong and thoughts stream in and judgment stream in and distraction takes hold. But every now and then you get these, these little pinpricks of openings into this pristine conscious awareness of just life itself without labels. And it's, I feel like when I come out of those spaces, I feel like a whole new person. It's like almost as if like energy has just like flooded through me and taken all the crap out for just a moment. And it's mm. just an incredible feeling. And what's amazing to me is that like we can cultivate that without any endogenous or without any um, exogenous substance. Like this is yeah, possibility yeah, yeah. exists within us. Of course, those substances can like uh, initiate you into that experience, but that's not the point. And those those will ultimately be a limitation for you. Um, yeah. thinking about like psychedelics because that's like the quickest fastest way to right. open right, right. those things but those are not the answers really they're going to just give you more questions but i think the yeah. meditative process is actually something that you can hold on to and practice on a well, daily basis like regularly without yeah uh, without, with less consequence maybe yeah right yeah. exactly but yeah it's, I, I feel like for all those things it's the experience they allow like what the experience, the occasion, the way they see, the way of looking, they open up or transmit or, yeah, allow your mind to, and to realize that your mind has that capacity, has such a broad capacity, like, and you can influence it through simple things like breathing or right, like, you know, like, there's so much you can do to kind of yeah influence and kind of yeah inflect a certain way of looking or being or understanding yeah um, to me i've been like i found that, like simple simple breathing patterns can really change oh yeah you know your your state of understanding the world and i feel like to think that there's something that you do regularly all the time without thinking about it and then if you focus your mind on it a little bit it'll totally change the way you are experiencing the world to me that's like really really crazy it's like it is really a interesting cr- thing it about. is Oh my God. It totally is. Because it's like this, yeah, the body is this, like we kind of treat it as this machine that functions regularly without thought, but then you realize it really doesn't work that way. It's like oftentimes has significant issues on a regular basis and then (laughs) you have to pay attention to. And, but then you can also influence it and it has this, you know, responsive ability. Um, That's actually pretty amazing. It is sometimes very frustrating. (laughs) Definitely. I mean, the breath is one of the most incredible tools that we have for shifting our consciousness, Um, being able to get ourselves out of certain patterns of thinking or certain energy in the body. Like when I'm feeling very anxious, I get anxiety that comes up. Like I really, when I can sit and focus on breathing patterns and stuff, it's amazing within a matter of a couple minutes of focused practice, there's a shift in energy and the breath is so mysterious in a way too, or magical. Cause I think it's one of the only, one of the only processes, if not the only process where we have both conscious and unconscious ability with it. Like mm-hmm. it is something that's happening unconsciously all the time while we're alive, you know, sleeping, you napping, moving around or we're in our heads, like our body's still breathing, our blood's still pumping, all of that, but we can also consciously influence it. We right. can also, at the same time, we can change our breathing pattern and we can harness the breath in various ways. And I think for me, that is like the best way to enter any sort of meditative practice is beginning with breath work and beginning with just a shifting your relationship with your own breathing patterns. Because to me, for personally, that's empowered me a lot to be able to work on my anxiety and to be able to work with myself and uh, and and show myself a little grace and kindness and love and have a tool that I can actually use to get myself out of spaces where I get a little bit, um, where I feel like I'm losing control of like the energy in my body. I'd be like, you know, like let's breathe in this way, let's sit. And all of a sudden I'm like kind of back in a state of balance. So it's just for anyone out there listening, who's interested in any kind of self-inquiry meditative practice. I mean, breath, breathing patterns and breath work, is is such a powerful and simple approachable way of which to in, of which to enter these spaces and really powerful magical things happen through breath work. I mean, it's unbelievable the way in which it kind of helps release certain 
emotions or energy, especially have you ever done like an intense breath work session before? Like I know like the, there's meditative breathing patterns that you do to get in these like calmer, clearer states, but then there are also people who do these breath work facilitations where it's way more intense breathing patterns, but it's more for like deep catharsis and things like that. Yeah. I haven't really done any of this stuff where you kind of up, you uh, like up regulate and push your uh, mostly I use it to calm down. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but I have heard about that. I'm curious, but I haven't tried it firsthand. Yeah. There are amazing facilitators out there who, um, who do like workshops of, I'm sure you're in New York. So, I mean, they're probably everywhere. Yeah, you probably, probably can find, probably find them really easily just through word of mouth. If you have a friend or anyone who's done it, like that's the best way to kind of find, uh, cause there are a couple different approaches people have, but they're really all very similar. And, basically when you do these intense breathing patterns, um, in these intense ways, I mean, they can be very much like a psychedelic experience right, in terms right. of like the kinds of emotional release, the insight that you have, um, sometimes even like what you might call a hallucination or visions or things like that can come up as well. But at the end of the day, at the end of those sessions, like you just feel so light and you feel like you let go of a lot of shit. Huh. Um, and I think that's something that we, we do a lot. Like, whenever I'm trying to explain like meditation to people, I'm like, I try to use the metaphor of like, of like dirt and oil, like on the body. Like, you know, there's a reason we take a shower every day or brush our teeth every day. Right. Like imagine if we didn't brush our teeth every day, the teeth would fall out of our face. Yeah. We would stink up every room we went into. Um, and so, and then also think about the feeling you have when you just get out of a shower after a long day, you feel really clean and refreshed and good. Yeah. Um, and so just like how the teeth and the body accumulate dirt and oil all day, every day, and we need to cleanse it from time to time, the same thing's true for our mind. We're absorbing so much crap consciously and unconsciously into our field of, of awareness all day. And most of which is not of any use for us. Most of which we don't is just taking up unnecessary space in our mind. And so a meditative practice is almost in a way like hygiene for the mind. It's just cleaning out all the bullshit um, that we don't need. So we don't, so our mind doesn't get all stunk up, you know, with bad ideas and, and, uh, and uh, self-judgment and all sorts of things that the mind's typically good at doing. We want to make sure we can clear space for that. So um, I always like to use that metaphor. I feel like it's just, it's simple. It's like, just like you have to brush your teeth every day. We got to work with ourselves too. And I think people yeah. are becoming more aware of this fact. And because of the difficult times we've been in, people are more open to talking about uh, mental health than they've ever been. We have a long way to go with that. But like we all, I think, I don't think there's a human on this planet who's not dealing with some sort of yeah. um, affliction or difficulty on some level, um, unless you're the Buddha somewhere, you know, and you're enlightened. But I've never met anyone like that, you know? Yeah, I think being more open to talking about stress and and yeah it's like after having these like you know very very stressful uh events that people experience in in kind of in general ways or in personal ways um i feel like that openness uh, i i think it's really positive and then it, it, also the acknowledgement that it's just everybody is is going through some kind of thing and it, it's everyone's understanding and experiencing it differently but you know it's like there are, there are really good days for everybody and really bad days for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think giving people that space and that understanding uh, and right. Providing that kind of window to kind of like cleanse your way out of it or step your way out of it or step towards something that's a little outside yourself. Like yeah, having that be a regular part of your life, like whether that's, you know, having like a, a painting you revisit that you have, or like whether it's like these other meditative practices, it's like, it's just something that, should be part of the regular conversation. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I mean, even just, you know, we're talking about like getting into this space of wonder and awe again, or like, or just like reinitiating ourselves into the freshness of life mm -hmm. and not looking at things from such a dull place, but seeing the freshness of, of everything, like ways in which to get out of there, like go to a museum, go to a gallery, go to a music concert, like get into your senses and like positive way and, and uh, experiencing life, go out in nature, go walk, you know, and just behold, go listen to the birds. Like go, if you're in New York, like go, go to the park and just 
hear the hear the birds that have migrated through that are coming yeah, through same, right spring, now like spring birds coming back it's pretty oh exciting, it's admit. so cool <laughs> it's so cool especially when you're up in the northeast like because um you're gonna see those patterns and maybe in more distinct ways at various times of the year where like life is just happening all around you working in these beautiful patterns and rhythms and and sometimes simply just beholding it and, yeah. it, and appreciating it by just bearing witness to yeah. that is is all we need to really get ourselves out but also going yeah going to see art going to hear artists and musicians going to a play instead of you know uh instead of watching netflix at home like get out like but it's hard to do because we're, we're you know there's so much inertia um around some of these things and our our culture is set up so that it's it just makes it easy for us to make these decisions of just oh i'm gonna stay in tonight and just uh you know watch tv shows and binge which is cool too i need to i need that from time to time i need to be able to sit and chill but like we also gotta we gotta put forth effort to get outside of these ruts by like getting out in the world totally i couldn't agree more um yeah i think it's like having that varied experience of the world and seeing all of its like being open to seeing its many facets and seeing that you're just this very kind of small part in it like Mm -hmm. and i think yeah schedules and and kind of habitual patterns like push you out of that so it's it's hard to kind of break out of them sometimes um yeah but yeah finding those little windows those little like tears in the veil those little passages yeah yeah exactly yeah (laughs) Yeah, um, man. It's kind of yeah. If, if I can offer just that little like, window, it's I ho- I feel like I'm doing something right. You are, man. You are, and I really appreciate you know the work that you're doing, and I'm super excited to see how it continues to evolve. Because so everybody out there, you you know, I'll have all the stuff in the show notes, but be sure to check out Dan's website and his Instagram page, and look through like some of the older pieces and how it's evolved, like over over time like it's just so exciting to see like where you're going to go next but i think the way that you're thinking about your work um is just for me really exciting and and something i'm deeply interested in and deeply inspired by and so i just really appreciate you and 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 the art that you're doing and the way that you're choosing to live in the world like it's not easy to choose to be an artist you know a lot of people don't really understand what that entails necessarily but it's such a beautiful powerful choice to make to be able to spend time doing something like making a painting it's it's just so counter to like what we think you know we should be doing and that's to me what makes it so beautiful and special about like the human experience you know like that we have this part of us as a as a species that needs to create that needs to express that needs mm-hmm. to do something that has no necessarily like practical survival value um and what does that say about our species but maybe that's for another conversation we can have but but today i'm just grateful for you for being on the podcast with me and um i like i said i'm super excited to see how you continue to evolve uh your work awesome yeah thanks so much i feel like that's like a lovely it's such a powerful idea and so i can just like even have a little glimpse into that and i feel like like you're saying like all these things um yeah it's just like it can be a really beautiful way of understanding the world when when things are going well so yeah for sure i mean it's always going to be you know peaks and valleys it's but it's like but it's a journey and we're moving from one space to another all the time moving through those passages and so i send you so much love and blessings and just uh just inspiration to your way to keep doing what you're doing because yeah. you have a big fan over here down in new orleans so oh, cool. um, so can't wait I mean, to huge, see huge fan of your work i like i can't tell you how much how much i've been zoning in on that <laughs> i know i'm gonna try to switch i've been having this painting here for most of the dialogues because it just fits in the space scale wise but i'm gonna That's start right. switching really them nice up thing. it's like uh um, it's like you know suggestion of kind of landscape space but there's all these other elements going on it's yeah. like hey, i think your work is really nice as well I, I appreciate it man you know i think we're all doing this together and we're trying to like see it through our own windows right we're trying to oh, right. express yeah. through our own perspective because no one has ever or will ever have the point of view that dan has right now like no one's going to see the universe through your eyes the way that you do and same with me with every human out there and that's what makes everybody a potential artist because we all have a unique perspective on life and so it's all about that sharing and so i appreciate your kind words 
back at me and I can't wait to get up to New York and, uh, and we'll have to come stop by your studio and meet in 3d. Yeah, at some yeah, point. Yeah, I would sure, love to sure. do that. So, awesome. Awesome. Well, well, enjoy the rest of your day. Me. Yeah, yeah. You too. for sure, man, for sure. It was such a pleasure. And, um, uh, look forward to connecting more in the future. All right. All right. Sounds great. Thanks. All right. Take care, Dan. Bye. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of Concerning the Spiritual and Art. If you like what we're doing here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay in touch and in tune with all the amazing offerings that we're going to be uh, bringing to this channel. Um, thanks again for all your support. Super grateful and uh, yeah, excited to uh, bring more content your way. Peace, y'all.